Happy Monday morning, everybody, as we start off in God's Word together today. Uh, Michael Harvey here, and um, we are in, uh, we're outside. We're not in the beautiful woods, picturesque woods, by some beautiful stream or, or pond. We're not um, in a prairie full of flowers. We're at a construction site, and if you're uh, familiar with Rochester, you can probably recognize this as a century construction site. Um, but it goes along with the um, devotion for today, so we'll, we'll let it go. Uh, devotion today is going to kind of continue on with some of the themes from this past weekend, Better Together. And I just couldn't help but just kind of tag along on that one because I am a huge fan of Better Together. Uh, that we're better together and apart. Teamwork, uh, the family of Christ, um, all that that entails is just such an amazing thing. So I couldn't help but uh, tag along on that one. And so we're at a construction site. And uh, I, I decided to come here because um, better together is, is true, and I believe in it with all my heart. Um, but many of you may know that sometimes it's not better together. <laughs> we don't always get along as people. And sometimes it's a lot worse. In fact, there have been many Christian writers that say something to the fact of, you know, the church would be perfect if there just weren't people involved in it. Or the church is, is, uh, is a fantastic place until the first person arrives or something like that. Um, well, the funny thing is, like, there is no church without people. But there's truth to that. We are all sinners. So when we get together and we get a bunch of sinners together, sometimes it really does not feel like better together. It feels like messed up together. Um, and a lot of that comes from just, yeah, our sinful natures. Uh, here we have behind us is this, what's going on with the century construction where I believe there's gonna be a pool over here and, and I'm not sure what else, but it's part of this big construction project they have over here. And uh, when you look at this, uh, there's a lot of workers that come in and out at different times, different contractors who do different parts of the job, and they have to coordinate with, a, with a, the foreman and the, and the, the people on the, up at, uh, the higher ups that, to make sure everything comes in at the right time and the right place um, in order to create a building. Now, if everybody came in at the same time and said, I'm going to do my job right now and would do the, my job the way I want to do it, uh, what happens? Uh, wouldn't even be this far. We would have a big pile of grossness on the ground and, and probably a lot of angry people and probably some fighting and people in jail. Because um, it doesn't work that way. It has to be coordinated. Things are better together when we truly act as a team and we don't do things because we want to do them, but we do them because something higher than us has the coordinated plan and we work together to get there. And of course, on a construction site like this, uh, the, the company, the engineers put the, the design together and what can work and the architects kind of lay it out and, and then uh, the, the project coordinators pull everything together and amazing things can happen. Uh, there's a building on um, the St. Catherine's campus, my daughter Lily goes there, and, and we went for a tour and it was very interesting because this, this Fontbonne building on the St. Catherine's campus is a building that when you look at it is very asymmetrical. It does not match from the left to the right. It looks like, um, well, it looks like what happened happened because the story goes that two nuns uh, were tasked with building this building on this campus. And so each uh, nun had a very distinct vision of what the, the building should look like and they did not agree. <laughs> so as this building's going up, they're kind of doing their own thing and so when you look at it, it's asymmetrical, like one side's doing one thing and one side's doing another. Um, in the end, somehow, either one or both of them kind of towed the line so the building ties together in ways, but it's two different buildings. Is that better together? I, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but, but in the end, the, the main purpose of having a building that didn't have big holes and, and uh, off-centered and, and mismatched floors tied through and, and they were able to pull things together. When we're doing things together, we're better together, we're best together when we're following the lead of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's when we're better together. And the more we get together, the more practice that we have and the more progress that we can have to being better together. But the farther apart we are and the less we see each other, 
the harder it is. And during the high and, or I should say the low part of COVID, um, we really saw that at Redeemer and so many other churches where the d separation, um, in that separation, Satan, like uh, Pastor Coughlin talked about on Sunday, really spoke into that. And in our separation, he really did a job on a lot of us. Whispering in our ears that so-and-so doesn't care about you and they don't want to be safe and they want to cause problems and and so and so is just a chicken and they're not really trusting in God and so and so and all of a sudden we are fighting each other and um, our construction site <laughs> it should be better together as we build and we follow God's mission was not going anywhere and it was going backwards and and some fights were had and and her feelings were had and and that's where that goes when we're together but we're not following the Savior. Um, so here we are, and, and we're going to go into God's Word. It's not all about me talking, because who cares what I have to say? We all care what God has to say. So we're going to be in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. And this morning, um, on Sunday morning, we were in Hebrews chapter 10, and I'd recommend going back to that. I believe it was chapter 10, verses 19 through 25, and it talks about the confidence we can have in Christ, and, and don't give up meeting together as some have, and, and the importance of gathering together, and how we are better together. We are much better together. Throughout the book of Hebrews, it talks about us and we and our. It's all language that connects all of us and um, helps us see that we are better together as long as we trust our Savior, as long as we're all um, together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and put Him in the lead, put our selfish, sinful desires behind us. Remember this construction site, if, if every person came in and wanted to do their own thing, like I want to get paid today and I want my thing to be done right now, it doesn't work that way. We have to follow the Savior and His plan, um, His job. So let's go to Romans cha or, sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, and it should sound familiar. Um, and it's after, of course, chapter 10. It's after Hebrews 11, which I recommend you read. We're not going to read it today. It's a longer chapter, but it's uh, kind of the stories of faith of a lot of the biblical saints. Uh, not all of them, but some of them. And here we go into chapter 12. Uh, and we know what we're united around and why we're better together because of what we hear in chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. I love that phrase, and I probably take it out of context and abuse it in a million ways because it's so great. <laughs> but I hope God forgives me that when I think of the great cloud of witnesses, in here it's looking back and showing all those saints of the faith that um, have gone before us and have shown us the way. And they're not gone. They're part of us. They, they are believers in Jesus, so they have life eternal um, I should say believers in Jesus back when they were around, Jesus was not, but they believed and trusted that Jesus was coming and they believed their, that God was, was going to protect them and, and uh, that by believing in God, righteousness was theirs through faith, like Abraham. And so this cloud of witnesses, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, we are not alone. We are better together, even with those that are long past and that we love but have... have uh, released in the arms of Jesus, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us then throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Throw off the sin that so easily entangles, right? All that. If, if we were like those sisters that were fighting and want to do the building our own way, or if we were like these contractors that just came in here and did whatever we wanted, and it would entangle this project up into it was it would be a complete mess and uh, would not be impossible to finish if they didn't work together. But we throw off those sins that we want ours and we want it now and we want it our way. We we, we give that up and we we follow Jesus. We seek his will, we seek his peace, and we seek what we hear next. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. We're better together with our eyes fixed on Jesus. That was a theme a number of years ago, and it's a great theme. We fix our eyes on Jesus. Um, the author and perfecter of our faith, he gives it to us, and he refines it till it's perfect. 
who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The great cloud of witness is a fantastic phrase, but I also love who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. Do you know what the joy is that was before him, that he laid his life, laid his pride down, laid his power down for? You know what, the, who's, what that joy was? It was you. He saw you. He saw me. He saw us. He saw us better together because he was bringing perfect harmony, righteousness, through his death and resurrection on the cross. You are his joy. I am his joy. We are his joy. We're better together for it. This week, know that you are the joy of God, that he loves you completely. And we're better together when we take the joy of God and own it. Because he saw us on the cross at our worst, full of sin, full of or I should say, without hope. We cannot do it on our own. We are full of sin. But God saw that, and he came to rescue us. And we are better together for it. I want you to re recognize that you're God's joy, but also those people that maybe you don't agree with, those people that you don't talk to that much, the people that we could invite to church and, and let them experience the joys of Jesus. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of God after he accomplished his purpose, uniting us around him and making us so it can, we can be better together. We really are better together because of Jesus and what he's done for us. This week, see how you can be better together. Reconcile with that person maybe you have a conflict with. Share the joy of Jesus with someone you love that knows it, but just tell them again because we all need to hear it more often. Find a way that you can be better together with Jesus and with his love. We got a car coming here. I think we got a student driver, so I'm going to let him pass, and then we're going to close this with a word of prayer, and uh, we're going to um, enjoy a week remembering that we are the joy of God that we're better together because we're his and he has brought us together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for dying on that cross, a painful cross, receiving those lashings and, and the names, taking all of our sin upon you because you saw the joy of our clean and perfect sinless forms that you were going to wash up and present before your Father in heaven. You washed all of us, Lord Jesus, and you have made us one people, a people of God. And now we're yours, and we're together, and we're better off together. Better off to worship, better off to, to praise you, better off to make it through this hard world together, joining you on your mission. Lord, I pray that each person on this devotion receives that and accepts your love and rests in your joy. Lord, we are better together and help us feel like we are together and help each one of us be a part of the solution that helps this togetherness happen and work. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, you're part of something bigger than yourself. It was given to you by Jesus Christ. He loves you completely. And we are better together because of him. Uh, our project is still not done. We still have some work to do. Um, God is doing work in our hearts, but it's happening at the right time. And maybe that's what I'll leave with you too, is, is give God the time he needs to do the work that he has planned. Um, that may not be as quick as you like it, uh, but we're better together and together we can get through it. Um, and we trust in him. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you uh, next Monday. Bye.